Call the meeting the commissioner's court to order. Clerk, call the roll. Glenn Whitley, <laughs> County Judge. Roy Charles Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Andy H. Wynn, Commissioner Precinct 2. Here. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Uh, our invocation day will be brought by Tim Stevens, Azel First Assembly of God. If you would come forward, please. And after the prayer, if you would remain standing for the pledges. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you today and thank you and praise you for your many blessings upon us. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy today. Father, I pray that you would place your hand upon the commissioners and every officer of this court, that you would give wisdom in making the right decisions today. Lord, we thank you that we can call upon you, and you promised you would answer. So I believe that even as we pray right now, you're not only listening and you're hearing us, but you're responding at this very moment. Lord, you admonish us in Zechariah to administer true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. And I pray that that would be evident in this room today. Thank you again for your many blessings. I pray a blessing upon every person in this room today, and may they experience your grace, your mercy, and your love. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you for it. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. <coughs> Agenda announcements. <coughs> Thank you, Commissioner. We have two announcements as it relates to the agenda. Uh, the first one is under facilities management, item 8D2. There's a revised court communication in your red folders this morning as it relates to that particular item. There was just a mathematical error, and we corrected that. <coughs> Finally, on purchasing, item 8I1. This is bid number 2014-056. We're going to ask that we hold that for one week. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. We have our uh, minutes of the March 25th meeting. Move for approval. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. I think you need to, you need to change that. Put my light on over there, and I'll turn this one off, and that'll straighten it out. <coughs> How's that look to you? That works great. Okay. <laughs> and that's a one delay. <laughs> Proclamations and resolutions. We have one, and uh, Roy Brooks is going to present that this morning. Roy. I have been asked on, by uh, Judge Whitley to present this proclamation. Uh, had I been asked, I would have done it on my own. Uh, it is in recognition of Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. And, Your Honor, if you will permit me, I'll read Please. it into the record. <clears throat> Whereas children are our future, as well as our greatest resource. And every child deserves a nurturing family and safe environment to grow into a healthy, productive member of the community. And whereas child abuse is one of our nation's most serious public health problems and threatens the safety of our community. And whereas 156 Texas children's lives were lost to child abuse in 2013, with 14 of these child deaths being in Tarrant County, where 12,284 
investigations were completed in 2013, and 5,689 children were confirmed as victims of child abuse and neglect. <clears throat> and whereas finding solutions to prevent child abuse is a community responsibility, depending on involvement of all citizens and communities, must make every effort to promote programs that benefit children and their families. And whereas effective child abuse prevention, investigation, and treatment programs succeed because of partnerships among public and private agencies, schools, religious organizations, medical services, and the business community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2014 Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month in Tarrant County. And further, we urge all citizens to be aware of the signs of child abuse and to act to protect the children of Tarrant County. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands and caused the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this first day of April, 2014. And on Ju Judge Whitley's behalf, I move approval. Second. Motion made and second. Please vote. Vote is unanimous. We have this morning Julie Evans, Executive Director of Alliance for Children and a variety of community <coughs> partners to receive this proclamation. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking time um, from your meeting and for this opportunity to come before you and say thank you for your support. Um, we could not do what we do for children without this being a community response. I think that's so key, um, as you indicated in the proclamation, um, that as a community, as a county, we are responsible for protecting these children and not one of us can do it. And I think the representation we have here today um, really will speak to that. Um, I would like to highlight the other agencies that join us um, and ask that they stand so that you can see and that they get an opportunity to also share their thanks. Um, with us today, uh, we have representation from the Women's Center, from Tarrant County Juvenile Services, other representatives from Alliance for Children, the Parenting Center, Safe Haven, Child Protective Services, Cook Children's Medical Center, Catholic Charities, ACH, and CASA of Tarrant County. It's an impressive group. Thank you all. Thank well, you for the work you do for Tarrant County's children. I think one of the things that sets Tarrant County apart, as is evident today, is that we know we do better when we collaborate for children. And we certainly um, do that well in Tarrant County. So thank you for your leadership um, in making this possible. And thank you for recognizing the over 5,000 children that have been victims this year. So thank you. Thank you. Certainly. <laughs> We have our consent agenda. Move approval. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. Mr. Manius. Thank you, Your Honor. We have one additional agenda item this morning. Um, under the administrator section, we're requesting that the court approve a contract between Tarrant County and Cornerstone Assistance as it relates to the provision of support services and rental assistance for homeless individuals and families. Move approval. Second. 
Motion made and second. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Budget and risk management. Right, but there is a long list of claims on there today from risk management, which are being recommended by the board. As you can tell, there are five individual claims listed, and we're happy to answer any questions you might have. But we are recommending their approval. Move for approval of the, of the claims. Second. Motion made and second to approve the claims. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. <coughs> Human resources, Ms. Glenn. No, not Ms. Glenn. Hi. She didn't feel like talking to you hey, today. And you'll, you'll do. <laughs> Move to receive and file the personnel agenda. Second. Motion made and second to receive the personnel agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. We have two additional items for your consideration this morning. First, we ask that you approve a waiver <coughs> of terminal benefits for the tax office. This is for a Motor Vehicle Manager 2 external position. It would be effective on April 2nd. The incumbent in this position resigned from employment on March 28th, had 300 hours of vacation. The tax office is requesting a waiver for the remaining 284 hours, and the cost of this waiver will be approximately $9,500 to the general fund, excluding the fringe benefits. Move for approval. Second. Motion made and second to approve. Any discussion? Vote. <clears throat> Vote is unanimous. Our final request, we're asking for another approval of waiver of terminal benefits for the district civil courts. This is for a court coordinator position. It's commonly referred to as an auxiliary court coordinator position. It floats between the district civil courts. We, this uh, request would be effective on April 7th. The incumbent retired from employment on March 24th with 400 hours of vacation, and the courts are requesting a waiver for the remaining 328 hours. The net cost to the general fund will be approximately $1,800, excluding fringe benefits. Move approval. Second. Motion made and second to approve. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Information technology. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning Chris. We have before you this morning from IT just one item, and uh, it is to request um, commissioner's approval of professional services contract uh, by Interprom uh, USA uh, for COVID training. This is uh, training that is uh, required uh, by our employees, and uh, we are uh, going the route of uh, bringing this training, uh, the trainer, in-house rather than sending them out and uh, saving us about $30,000. Good job. Travel. Move approval. Second. Motion made and second to approve. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We have uh, some interlocal agreements. Commissioner Ficus. There's no items on purchasing. Second. Motion made and second to approve item uh, 8L, 1A, and B. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. I have two interlocals, one with the city, well, both with the city of Fort Worth. Uh, items 8L, 2A, B, C, and D. I'd move for approval. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. We have a bond. We, we have a bond here. today. <laughs> and Ann's not here today. It's for Randy Renoir for a $2,500 bond. He'll be sworn in here in a couple of weeks, but the bond's available for y'all's review and approval. Now. Move for approval. Second. Motion made and second to approve the Bond for Randy Renoir, fire marshal. Any discussion? Please vote. Vote is unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Were there any appointments today? There being none, we have our claims in the addendum. Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. Motion made and second. Is there any discussion?
there being none, please vote. Vote is unanimous. Briefing, Mr. Manius. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. We have one item to bring to the court this morning. This is our initial update on public health related issues. We're going to talk a little bit about West Nile virus. Uh, Dr. Curian is here to address the court at this time. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Good morning. Dr. Curian. Um, Today is the first day of uh, the seasonal West Nile virus surveillance for 2014, and I'm here this morning to brief you um, on our plans for 2014 on this season. Uh, before we go into the 2014, a quick recap of past seasons. Uh, what you see is the uh, 11 years of prospective West Nile virus human surveillance data. The blue line indicates the total number of cases reported each year. Red is the number of deaths. As you can see, after progressive decline over recent years, West Nile virus research in 2012 here in Tarrant County. Well, it researched nationwide, but most substantially here in the North Texas region. Uh, last year was a, a relatively mild season. We had about 10 cases uh, from four cities with uh, two deaths. This is the historical mosquito submission data, and uh, the idea to present this is to um, make it abundantly clear that there is no correlation between number of specimens submitted and the prevalence of West Nile virus. Okay, as you can see in 2013, we had a huge number of over uh, um, 4,200 uh, specimens that were submitted and tested, uh, but the total number of positive uh, samples were only, 30, uh, or were only 47. 37 is a, is a typo there, it's 47 samples. Um, we had no human cases in the unincorporated area Last year, we had three West Nile virus positive samples from the unincorporated areas. I'm going to skip this slide. I've already covered this. Um, real quickly, the only uh, change that's been made in 2013, as opposed to seasons in the past, is that we have not only increased the number of uh, trap locations countywide, but also increased the surveillance time frame. So currently, we do year-round surveillance for West Nile virus. In the absence of an effective human vaccine for West Nile virus, um, the only way to prevent West Nile virus infection and disease in the community is to, pre is to prevent the infected mosquito bites. And this can be accomplished not only through uh, collaborative efforts of a good integrated mosquito control program that, like the one that the health department has and is responsible for, but also can be accomplished through effective personal protective measures, such as use of insect repellents when outdoors, avoidance of mosquitoes, meaning staying indoors during dusk to dawn when these Culex mosquitoes are highly active, uh, wearing protective clothing, uh, eliminating breeding sites uh, in, around your homes and in your community. As you can see here, last year only 25% of our cases reported use of insect repellents, always use, um, 25% reported always using insect repellent when outdoors. In 2012, 6% reported always using insect repellents. Human behaviors, as you know, are the most difficult ones to change. We are working, we're striving through targeted educational efforts to increase this proportion. And I want to reiterate one more time that the fight against mosquito this season has to be a collaborative, community-based effort. And I cannot under, uh, underscore the uh, importance of individual level actions such as the protective measures that I had mentioned earlier. Coming to the 2014 season, uh, the most important change for the 2014 season is how public health officials across the nation are going to define West Nile virus human cases. Um, is every year, CDC, in collaboration with the local, state, and territorial public health epidemiologists, put forth standardized case definitions to define these human cases. And this is done to ensure that the data from one region is comparable to uh, that of the other. So when we say 10 cases of West Nile virus human cases in Tarrant County and compare it to 12 cases of uh, human cases, say, in Orange County, California, we are talking about the same thing. We're comparing apples to apples. So this year, uh, the human case, a confirmed human case is going to be defined as a clinically comparable case with a lab confirmation, meaning uh, the, the blood or the CSS cerebrospinal fluid specimen from a human tests positive for West Nile virus infection. A clinically compatible case is then further defined as fever and chills as reported by the patient or the healthcare provider and the absence of a neuroinvasive disease. If there are neurological signs and symptoms, then the case gets categorized as a West Nile neuroinvasive disease. 
and the absence of a more likely clinical explanation, meaning you cannot explain the fever and chills to other conditions other than this West Nile virus infection in humans. So what's changed this year is just this component, the fever and chills component. In the past, it's, it's broadened the case definition. So in the past, the requirement was that a case, uh, a case could be considered a human case of West Nile virus infection if there was a fever of 100.4 degree Fahrenheit or greater. So this year, that restriction has gone away. It's just presence or absence of fever. So what's happened is the case, the case definition is much more relaxed. So perhaps the cases that were not considered as cases in the seasons past would now be considered or would now be captured. So there is a potential for seeing a slightly higher number of cases this year. And we will be monitoring this very closely to determine if this increase we are seeing is uh, in fact due to a genuine increase in the West Nile virus infections in our community and not a surveillance artifact as a result of these changes in the case definition. But Dr. Kirian, uh, in the case of the, the new definition, mm -hmm. uh, which includes low grade uh, fever, you are more than likely not talking about neuroinvasive cases. No, right? the same, uh, I've just put a, put a put I've just illustrated the West Nile virus no. fever definition. It's the same for neuroinvasive disease also. It's neuroinvasive disease is defined as a clinically compatible with lab confirmation and patient has fever <coughs> and chills with neurological signs and symptoms and absence of a more likely clinical explanation. Yeah. Are you planning to keep track of the cases? based on the old definition, that way you can tell the difference between uh, the two? Typically, on an average, and this is uh, anecdotally, we see about, uh, about 5 to 8 percent of the cases in the past season did not meet our case definition because of this fever criteria. So we, we tend to, you know, we expect to see a potential increase of 5 to 8 percent. Okay. My apologies, the slide is hard to read. I have provided you with handouts for this. Uh, these are suggested guidelines for the face response. These are the same guidelines that we used in 2013. These are adapted from the CDC guidelines. And if you recall, we have five risk category levels ranging from zero, which is no risk of uh, uh, human outbreak, to five, which is uh, a probability of a full-blown outbreak in progress. And uh, each of these risk category levels have clear uh, clear-cut uh, surveillance, uh, education, and control measures that have been laid out. And one thing I want to point out is just like last year, um, all our response activities are based off the mosquito surveillance data, not human cases. So mosquito surveillance data act as a trigger to initiate a response activity, especially the adult deciding efforts, the spraying efforts. So spraying this season will be done in response to a positive only, to a uh, only in response to a positive West Nile virus mosquito sample. Um, last year, if you recall, we also sprayed in response to increasing Culex mosquito densities in the traps. This year, we, we don't plan on doing that, and this is based off the surveillance data from last year. What we've learned is that there is no correlation between increasing Culex densities and the prevalence of West Nile virus in the community. And these guidelines suggest that guidelines, these are not absolutes, so are subject to change during the operational period if an unusual pattern emerges. This is the uh, uh, screenshot of our West Nile virus page that's placed on the public health website. I want to spend a few minutes on this map. If you click on this interactive map tool, you have this pop-up window that pops up. You, you have four tabs. Uh, in the announcement tab is where we will place all the relevant announcements. If we spray, the spray mats will be placed here. The spray timing, this, the dates and the schedules will be placed in this tab. West Nile virus view tab lets you search for positive mosquito traps, negative mosquito traps, presence or absence of human cases in a zip code, and you can sp select a specific date, frame, date range to search these results in. Layers just adds additional layers to your map. You can search for these results by ISDs, by cities, by population estimates. Uh, tools just lets you um, buffer around a, a, a trap location and view the progression of a trap results over time. Um, 
These are a few uh, selected action items that have been completed real quick. Um, we have ILS uh, with 35 municipalities for 2014 season. Um, and as part of the ILS, we had requested cities to provide us with two points of contact. So all our communications will be with these two points of contacts that the cities have identified with the expectations that these contacts will take this information further within their agency or within their jurisdiction. Um, same as last year, we will provide the surveillance instruments and the surveillance uh, services, various surveillance services. We have expanded our uh, response capabilities. We have uh, ground spray and aerospace contract in, contracts in place. Cities have the capability of piggybacking on our contracts to expand their uh, response activities also. We had a surveillance kickoff <coughs> West Elmo had a surveillance kickoff meeting on March 20th, well attended, well received. It was basically essentially a refresher course on our various surveillance uh, services and activities. Um, the mosquito fish program, the Gambusia Phoenix program, is up and running this season. We had problems last year. It's up and running, and if you recall, Gambusia is a freshwater fish that feeds on mosquito larvae and is used as a biocontrol to lower the mosquito populations. So we plan on handing these uh, Gambusia Phoenix uh, to our city partners free of charge to be introduced into um, man-made fish ponds, uh, pools, etc. Uh, with a word of caution not to introduce these fish into natural habitats or natural bodies of water. It's against state law to do that. Um, our, uh, we have four spray trucks, one backpack sprayer. All instruments have been calibrated and supplies have been stocked, so we are up and ready to go. And our community outreach efforts will be ongoing throughout the season. Um, I want to end by saying that there are uh, several data elements that modulate the severity of a season variations in the mosquito survival, variations in the West Nile virus dissemination as a result of temperature, variations in the time elapsed since the initial infection, etc., cetera, add, add various layers of complexity uh, to determining or to the determination of the risk and the magnitude of West Nile virus transmission. Hence, it becomes very difficult to predict how a particular season is going to turn out. So we are not sure how the 2014 season is going to turn out. But uh, what I can say with certainty is that uh, we are prepared for the worst and hoping for the best. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Just one comment, and that's on the uh, website uh, uh, information. That looks like an extremely valuable tool, and I congratulate Public Health for coming up with that. Uh, it, it was a team effort. In conjunction with yes. IT. Yes, that's what I was going to say. It's a team effort with IT folks, uh, really responsive and have worked hard on getting this site up and ready. And if you click on the site today, you may not find any data because this is the first day of the season. Submissions uh, will be done on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we expect the results uh, to be available by Wednesdays and Fridays. So these websites will be updated in real time. So if you click on the map on Wednesday or a Thursday, you will see some results. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, pursuant to section 551-071-072-074-076-725 and 087 of the Texas Government Code, we will recess to close session and return at the conclusion of those discussions. Having concluded our closed session, we have nothing to come before this court, so this meeting is adjourned.